guys, my name is Lacey of Spookus and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. No, your eyes do not deceive you. This is not an April Fool's prank, though that was hilarious when I did that. I've actually decided to do a collection series on my channel. There's a couple reasons why I think that I've caved. One is that with everything that's been going on, I know from, you know, myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people, it's been really nice to get down to makeup basics, so to speak, and just really love makeup on a surface level and not think too deeply about it and to watch collection videos, watch re like new makeup releases, reviews, um, going on the wish list or not kind of videos. And I, I've been finding things like that very comforting right now. And so that kind of pushed me into wanting to create content like that for you guys. Also, just in general, I'm trying to get back into the swing of filming. And I figured this would be actually relatively easier for me to do. I'm trying to do it as long form as possible with minimal edits because I just need to do something easy. And finally, I think the kind of reservation I've had in the past for doing collection videos is I didn't want to deal with like the judgment that people are obviously going to have because I do have a lot of makeup. I have more makeup than any one person could ever need in their life, but that's what, that's what works best for me. I'm happy with my collection. I like having a large collection. Makeup is one of my vices. It's one of my things, so to speak. It's one of the things that I choose to allocate a lot of money towards. I allocate my own money towards it. I work very hard. I've been working basically my whole life. 99.9% .9 of all of this makeup I have purchased myself. Maybe Matt has got me a couple things along the way and very, very few of it has ever come in PR from this YouTube channel. I could probably count on one in one hand, maybe both of my hands, how many individual pieces of makeup I've gotten because of PR. It really hasn't been much. This is all mine. It's heavily curated. It's organized. It's perfect for me. And if that bothers you, I don't know what to tell you because I think the rapport that I've built with my audience at this point, I think you guys who really know me, you know that I'm not someone who brags. I'm not someone who shows off. I really am a grateful person. I appreciate everything that I have. I appreciate the things that I've, able, I've been able to work for in my own life. I appreciate the opportunities I've gotten because of YouTube. I don't take any of it for granted. So all of that being said, I'm doing my collection in parts because it's so ridiculous. I'm doing highlighters in themselves in parts because I have multiple highlighter drawers and it's not me showing off. It's not me bragging. I'm not, you know, trying to make anyone feel bad. And if you think you're going to feel bad watching my collection videos, if you think that it's going to push you to shop, it's going to make you feel bad about the size of your collection, it's going to put you in a bad financial place, especially now with everything going on. Don't watch this video. It's fine. But, you know, enough of you have been like, we want to see the collection, sis. So that's where we are. Just to explain my setup real quick, I'm in like my slouchiest t-shirt possible. I did put my rings on so that you guys would know it was me. <laughs> but anyway, this is half of an old desk and it sits next to my great grandmother's vanity, which is the same color wood. And this houses all of my makeup. I have one other plastic set of drawers that holds my lip collection. And that's really it. I have some baskets that sit on top. I think I might have put pictures of my whole entire setup on my Instagram. I'm not sure. I'm not going to show a whole zoom shot of this right now. But if you watch my lives, you can see it in the background. And every single drawer is incredibly organized. I organize by type of makeup and then by brand. And it's very curated. I've done, I think, like three declutters already in the year since I've lived in Albany. And I'm very happy with it. This is a collection that suits me a lot. I'm going to go through every individual piece of makeup. I'm going to swatch everything. I'm going to take my time because I want this to be a long, calming video. And I'm going to talk about, like, why I own this, what circumstances I would wear it in, all of that stuff. We're going to swatch everything. I have a damp makeup eraser in the background to help me out. And we're just going to get started. I'm going to use my leg to kind of balance out this drawer because it's a heavy drawer and I don't want it to fall with all of my makeup in it because that has happened to me like once before and it was enough for me to learn my lesson forever. So let's see. Let's start with the Fenty right here because I think the Fenty and the Becca is what kind of 
grabs a lot of people's attention. But right away, oh, side note, my hands are real messed up. My hands are real, real messed up from how much I wash them at work. Um, they're doing a little bit better today, but try not to focus on my hands. <laughs> try to focus on the beautiful makeup. But anyway, right up front in my Fenty collection, I have my Diamond Ball Out Fenty Kilowatt Highlighter. This is the shade that you can only get on the Fenty website. I believe the proceeds of this go to, I forget the name of her foundation, but it goes to Rihanna's foundation, her charity. I love this. Matt got me this one in Trophy Wife as well, the swatches are going to get difficult at this angle. He bought me both this and Trophy Wife for Christmas one year. And it's really like a graphite looking kind of shiny gray. And I love this. I love this as eyeshadow. I love this applied on the cheeks with like a super fluffy brush. It's such a sparkly, interesting kind of avant-garde effect. That's another reason why I think I have so many highlighters besides the fact that I'm just a monster is I do like weird colored highlighters. I like draping highlighters, like layering highlighters. I like odd reflex, interesting colors, alien colors. I'm very into like weird alien gothy full drag makeup so if you're not into that if you're someone that needs a very utilitarian makeup collection to go to work with that makes sense for you but i'm lucky enough that basically every job including my current job that i've had in my adult life lets me be a total weirdo i get to be a weirdo on the internet so i like to have a lot of options but anyway so that's my silver one and the silver one is the sister shade the trophy wife i didn't get this when it first launched when everyone lost their minds, but I do absolutely love this shade. I like it layered over a lighter kind of white gold highlighter. I like it by itself. This angle is ridiculous. I did not think this through. I love how sparkly the kilowatt highlighters are and the really foiled formula. I love them. And then I go into more weird Fenty colors. This is Water Brat the pink one. This one actually makes me think of Nisa because I know she lusted after it for a while and then she got it also super sparkly which I like. And then Chills is the blue one which I don't think was as popular as Whatever at. This is very pale friendly in my opinion. If you're a pale person like myself and you want a weirdo highlighter it has almost like a translucent base with just a blue flip. I really, really like this. Ruby Riches, which is the now renamed shade. I believe it was originally supposed to be called Geisha Chic. And then they put a stop to that real quick. This is more like foiled metallic versus super sparkly like the other ones. But this layered over blush for like a heavy blush, intense look or blush draping. I feel like Fenty and Rihanna were ahead of their time maybe with the whole heavy cheek product blush draping thing that's very popular right now the whole e-girl thing but i love this i love layering foiled eyeshadows and highlighters over blushes especially matte blushes to kind of like kick them up a notch that i'm really into right now and i also have all of the like split pans that i think were a summer release not this last summer but the summer before this is Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. I think this was like the most popular one. This one again, this layered over blush or on the eyes or just by itself like really draped. So pretty, but they read kind of like eyeshadows. But again, I'm really into that. Sandcastle and Mint Mojito. Interestingly enough, this one actually, if you have deeper skin, could definitely be like a wearable highlight. But when you mix these together, they make a very nude highlighter. One that actually works, I feel like, on my skin tone. And I really like it. This blue one is more of like a silver base than the Chills highlighter. It's not quite strongly as blue as this one. Seven Day Weekend and Poolside. This one probably is my least favorite, but I still like it. It's just more on the cool tone side. And I only just recently got into cool tone blushes and cheek products but i really like it mean money and hustler baby this is the more kind of light goldy split pan that came out again when she first launched her highlighters the one side and all of these split plans tends to be more of like a natural glow from within and then the other side is the more foiled side i like to mix them together but i especially like this shade maybe it's better on the pan i like this side because it's almost like a peachy gold flip. And I'm really into highlighters that do that. I also have 
Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. This one I got because of Stephanie Nicole because she said that this duped one of her favorite highlighters in an ABH palette and I was all about anything Stephanie Nicole recommended. Again, I tend to prefer them mixed together. I think they make a really beautiful shade mixed together. I'm sorry if this keeps moving. This is my first time trying to do something like this. I'm hoping that I'm in focus. I'm probably going to check in a second. And then this one now reminds me of Abby. Abby Williamson, who's a friend of mine, loves this highlighter duo. Has like panned it, I think. Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This is the super fair friendly one. Again, the one side is a little bit lighter than this side. This is very much like I would wear this to a job interview or something that I maybe have to be more subtle with, but it's so super pretty and so super fair friendly. I've kind of messed up this side a little bit, but I really like it. Okay, put the Fenty back. Camera angle might be a little different because I got up to check that I was in focus that entire time, but anyway, moving backwards from the Fenty, I have three... You Glow Girl Baked Highlighters from J Cat Beauty. This one's in Bella Rose. This was the first one I ever got. I got this because of the Taylor, or I think now she's Taylor Wynn here on YouTube. This one is super frosty and blinding if you're very fair like I am. It's a very fair friendly highlighter. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera. It's very frosty pink, and because it's baked, it's such a super blinding formula. And then I wanted this one, and Hannah, Smoky Below Hannah, happened to be decluttering it and sent it my way because she knew that I wanted it. This is Crystal Sand. This one is a less kind of frosty, more like nudie color. Again, I don't know if my swatches are coming across on camera. Maybe I, I don't want to swatch on the back of my hand because my hand is so messed up, but we might have to. We're going to have to do the back of the hand. So this one is Bella Rose. If you can see, it is so super blinding. And then let's do Crystal Sand. Less white and frosty, but so super beautiful. And then also Hannah decluttered Moonlight to me. I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or not. I'm kind of on the fence about it because I have other highlighters that do this that I think I like more. This one's like a very strong yellowy gold. I don't know. Hmm. Now that I have it here, I'm thinking I might part with it. I wasn't planning on decluttering while filming this because I've already like recently decluttered, but I don't. Hmm. I just feel like if I'm going to reach for the J-Cats, I'm going to reach for one of these two. I don't know. I'm going to think about it, <laughs> but know that the other two are my favorites. Next up, we have the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter. Which shade do I have? Iced. I think this is the lightest shade. I wish they would come out with more shades of this. This is such a gorgeous highlighter, but they only have a handful of shades. And this one's more yellowy than I wish it was. I wish it was more, like, neutral. But anyway, this one, this is such a good formula. This feels so silky when you touch it, and it just melts into the skin. There's not any glitter in it. It's such a pretty, glowy, silky highlighter. There's no kind of like roughness that a baked highlighter would have. There's no grit to it. There's no glitter flakes. This really just looks like wet skin. It's such a good one. And then behind the melt, I keep my two novel highlighters. This is the one that I really love. This is ozone. I don't even have to look at the back. These colors look so similar on camera. It's this one. It's definitely less gold than the milk one. This, again, a baked formula, so it's very blinding, but it's very smooth. It mimics the Amorese highlighter a lot, in my opinion. The other one that I have, though, Privilege, I don't like this as much, but I still like it. It's a pink shade. It's like a peachy pink, but it's not nearly as blinding as Ozone. I don't know why they would differ that much within the same line, but they do. But I really like the color. The color is fairly unique. I feel like I don't get a lot of peachy colors in highlighters. I tend to get a lot of straight pinks. And if I do see peaches, they rarely work on lighter skin tones because I feel like they're more like this, which I'll get into later. But I do like it. I just don't like it as much as Ozone. We have a couple drugstore ones 
back here. Up first, this is fairly new to my collection because I don't typically buy from Maybelline because they're not cruelty free, but a friend decluttered a bunch of makeup to me recently and this was in the package of things that she sent to me. This is the Master Chrome Highlighter in, what shade is this, 250? I'm not sure the shade name actually. I know this is like the Nikki Tutorial shade, so it's like the white one. <laughs> Got it. I think this is supposed to be like the drugstore dupe for the glazed donut shade that Nikki Tutorials has with Ofra. This is such a nice formula for the drugstore. I was kind of shocked when I swatched this because I didn't know the drugstore could be this good. This is so soft and I don't want to say buttery because it's not quite glidey like the milk one is. It does feel powdery but still slick but not with any dimethicone it's, or like silicone. It's very, very smooth. I like it. And then right behind the Maybelline one, if I can get it up with my <laughs> newly clean fingers, the Milani Highlighter in 01 Afterglow. Milani makes such good face products. This is a really good highlighter from the drugstore as well. This one does feel like a, like a little bit, like a, like a, touch like a kiss more silicone than the Maybelline one and it's not nearly as glowy in my opinion even though on camera and this lighting everything looks ridiculous and they look like they're the same shade but I promise you the Milani one's a touch more pink and it's a touch less glowy but it's still really nice and natural on my skin tone slightly pink highlighters on my skin tone tend to be very natural looking because I am a ghost and then oh god I cannot get anything out and then behind those two, I have my I Heart Revolution Shimmering Highlight Powder in a banana. I got this when I got some of the first Tasty palettes. This is surprisingly good. But then again, I have had highlighters that I've liked already from Makeup Revolution in my collection. We'll get to those in a second. This is just... It's interesting because it's three colors and I do like to mix them all together or just stick with the pinky kind of shade and the yellowy shade. It's surprisingly blinding for, <laughs> again, I say that I wouldn't have these in my collection if I didn't like them. I was just personally very impressed by this formula. I think I had waited to get Teresa's seal of approval from this highlighter before I just went for it, but I'm really glad that I did. Then behind those, I have my Juvia's Place pressed highlighter. I have a lot of loose highlighters, a lot of Juvia's Place loose highlighters. I'm not going to get into those in this video because they exist in a different drawer, but this one is the press highlighter that works best for me. It's the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3. It's the lightest one that they make, I believe. This highlighter will get hard pan because of how silicone it is. It kind of feels on par with the Milani one, but it's way more blinding. I have a lot of like frosty glazed donut shades now that I'm here <laughs> comparing them all together but you know what I don't give a shit but this does get hard pan and a lot of this like patchiness that I think you might be able to see on the pan is for me using tape to kind of pull up the hard pan so I feel like I reach for it less for that reason because I don't like products that get hard pan just the inconvenience of them tends to push me to declutter them but because this is so blinding and it's so nice I keep it <laughs> this one I think Hannah Smoky Glow Hannah might have convinced me to get. It's a split pan from Pixie. Delicate Dew is the shade names, I guess. But I can only really use this pink side. This is way too deep for me unless I mix them together. But I've gone in. I don't know if you can tell on this pink side. Super glossy. Feels a lot like the Milk Highlighter, actually, where it's not big. It's not, like, slick with silicones or oils. It's just like a glidey powder and very blinding. That's what it reminds me of. I should swatch the other side while I'm at it too. I just never use this side because it's much deeper on my skin tone. But mixed together, I can kind of make it work, but I'd rather just use the pink side. Oh God, we're getting dangerous pulling this out this far. But this corner right here is my Makeup Geek highlighters. These are older. I don't know if they still made, make these. I think I might have had one or two more and I've decluttered them because they weren't as good as these ones. These are dual chromey highlighters, but they're not the most blinding. They're almost like a work appropriate duo chrome highlighter, if that makes sense. Like if I wanted something show-stopping and ridiculous and avant-garde, like 
for how I'd wear for YouTube or like going out or like anything but work basically, I probably wouldn't reach for these if I wanted something dramatic. Something like work though, I might. <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't even know if they sell these anymore though. This is Glitz. I don't know if they're with their rebrand they brought them back, I should say. But this is the shade Glitz. This is less flippy and duochrome than other highlighters, even within this line. This is more of like just a really blinding pink shade. I swear it doesn't look this blinding on the skin though. I think you're able to get it there, but this comes off way more subtle on the cheeks with a brush. And this is the shade Electrify. This one actually might be my favorite. I've kind of busted it in this corner from dropping it, I think. This one is a yellow kind of silvery flip. Very similar to Give Me Glow Halo, which is one of my favorite highlighters of life. This one is Celestial. This one is like a light kind of lavendery shift. Everything looks great in this lighting on this camera. But in real life, these are fairly subtle for duochromes, in my opinion. And then this one is Lit. This one might be... Uh, I said Electrify was my favorite, but now that I'm thinking about it, Lit might be my favorite because this is a peach shift, which I feel like I don't see very often. I see pink and blue shifts very often. And this is pretty unique. I don't know. I'm really into peach shifts. These remind me of Angelica. <laughs> Angelica Nequest. Angie, she, I know she very much favors these highlighters and put one in her Try Beauty box. And I think part of me might keep them because I know that Angie likes them. I tend to do that. I tend to, not if I absolutely dislike it and will never reach for it, but sometimes if I like something, the fact that a friend of mine also really likes it kind of encourages me to keep it. And I don't know why. I think, I think I'm just like a sentimental person and I like, like being reminded of my friends when I use certain pieces of makeup. I don't know if that's ridiculous or not, but in the same breath, I know some of you guys have told me like, you think of me when you use certain products because of how much I love them. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just an empathic person. Who knows? Let's see. Just to give my leg a break, I'm going to start at the beginning again. I have some Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl Highlighters up in the front. And I don't even know if Laura Geller exists anymore. I know that they were taken away from Ulta.com. I think you can still buy things off of the Laura Geller website. I heard a rumor that they like declared bankruptcy or something. Cannot confirm or deny. I'm not trying to start rumors in this video. I just know that you can't get them on Ulta anymore, which sucks because I do think Laura Geller makes good cheek products, but I have most of her baked highlighters because I'm a monster. This one's in Charming Pink, which as the name suggests, it's pink. It's actually my least reached for Laura Geller highlighter. I have others that I like better, but this is one that would work very well on my skin tone because of that pink tone that it has. Like I said, light frosty pinks tend to work very well on me. They tend to look the most natural. Then this one, this one I love and have done some damage to, but this is not appropriate for my skin tone at all. This is Gilded Honey. This is the shade that like every influencer lost their mind about. I specifically remember Laura Lee back in the day praising this shade back before Dramageddon, back when I still really loved Laura Lee. This is a deep gold. This not appropriate for my skin tone, but I love it with a blush heavy look or a bronzer heavy look on the cheeks. In the summer, especially just bronzer on the cheeks with this looks very summery to me. I don't know if I'm just making that up and just to find keeping things that are ridiculous, but I don't mind it when I can blend it out with other products. And it's just so blinding. I love the big chalet formula. If my lighting changed somewhere along the way, it's because it looks like a bulb went out in my ring light. We're just going to power through. This is probably my favorite. I don't know. I have a couple. I have like two other favorites. This is my top three <laughs> of Laura Geller highlighters. This is Peach Glow. I think I said earlier, I don't see a lot of peach highlighters that are light enough for my skin tone. And I love this over a true peach blush, like a just straight peach everywhere look. Oh, I've done that so many times, especially when the shade peach, everything was super in. Everyone had a peach eyeshadow palette. Everyone had a peach blush. Still love that look. And then this one, Diamond Dust. I've done some damage in this one as well. This is probably my go-to pink shifting duo chromey highlighter, even though I have like three that look exactly the same. I feel like these were really popular for a while too. These like lilac-y violet pink shifts. 
with a translucent or white base, but I'm really into that. Just to be consistent, I'm going to skip around, skip these three highlighters and we'll go back. This is my big ass Laura <laughs> Keller baked gelato swirl highlighter in Pixie Pearl. This was like something you could only get on their website when they were still at Ulta. And it's in this special like giant size and I've used the crap out of it. It might not look like it, but this is so flat for me using it constantly. This is again, just one of those really perfect frosty pink pale friendly shades. And I really love this. This is like a go-to. This is like if I don't know what highlighter gra to grab for a look and it's not like a crazy look, color specific look, this tends to be the highlighter that I'll grab. It's one of my like absolute favorites in my collection. Backtracking to these middle things, these middle highlighters that I skipped over. I have two Tarte highlighters. I feel like the Tarte formula is severely underrated for highlighters. This feels, this was like one of my first very blinding highlighters that I owned in my collection. And I think the reason why people overlook these is the glitter because this has chunky glitter particles in it. But I feel like the glitter gets lost when you apply it on the cheeks. But I bet you that's why a lot of people skip over this. But this is the shade Exposed. This is like a yellowy gold. So not quite as pink. That would kind of read as more like neutral and glossy on my skin. You would definitely pick up the yellow on the, on me, I should say. But I still really like it. And then this one I got as a sample somewhere along the way in my life. Probably not any time recently. But this is the shade Stunner. Which I find to be very unique. But it's a little dark for me. It kind of reads like Becca Opal. But I like a shade that's a little deep on me over a blush that I'm trying to gloss up or a blush that I'm trying to give some shine to. Maybe like a matte blush, like something that's just a little too flat on my cheeks. Something like this that is kind of pinky tone, but a little bit more nudey and dark for me works really well to amp up blush for me. So I keep it around for that. And then we skipped over, let's see making room for swatches along the way. We skipped over this one as well. Lorac Celestial. This is their Mega Beam highlighter. So back in the day I used to have like three of their other highlighters and they were very like glow from within, subtle, dull, not quite what I go for personally. And then they released this like Mega Beam line. This is blinding. This is such a good formula. Again, kind of more of a yellow gold, but it does read very glossy on me. It's not too strong of a yellow. This is so fucking pretty. This is so blinding. When I first got this highlighter, I could like not put it down because of how blinding it was. Not quite as blinding, but still a classic. Urban Decay Sin Afterglow Highlighter. This kind of is like the Mary Luminizer for me in that it's not a uh, alien slut, as Teresa would say. It's something more work appropriate, something more <laughs> church appropriate, I don't know. It, again, everything looks fine in this lighting. I'm also wiping off swatches with a damp makeup eraser in between. So take what I'm saying more so than what you're looking at. This is a very beautiful nude shade for pale skin. But it just doesn't read blinding on the cheeks. So I reserve it for when I want to glow from within, which is not very often. But I... <laughs> But it's good for that. I'm sure a lot of people would probably opt for a formula like this. I'm sure. I think in general, I feel like a lot of people are stepping away from ultra blinding highlighters. But I'm not. And I don't plan to anytime soon. Classic though. I remember the day I bought this because it was a big deal for me. Because I was just getting into high-end highlighters at that time. It was before all of this monstrosity. And I remember Matt taking me to Ulta so I can get this. And I had like researched it for so long. And I like... Uh, it's kind of special for that reason. Arguably one of the things that started all of this. And then right next to it, I have my Natasha Denona Diamond and Glow like mini duo. I absolutely do not recommend this. I think it's such a waste of money. You get like two little eyeshadows and I don't think the products inside are good enough. I like a lot of Natasha Denona products, but this is not one of them. This side is kind of like the Fenty diamond glow kind of highlighter where it's a bunch of chunks of 
individual pieces of glitter that kind of meld together to form a glow. But for me, I find it very hard to apply unless I use my finger. Like the way that it just swatched now is really beautiful and really pretty. But even with the Fenty one, I have to use my finger. I like this best as a highlighter topper over an already crazy highlighter just to kick it up a notch. And then this side is kind of, I guess, the blushy side. What are they called? Diamond Powder and Duo Glow. This is a pink with a gold shift. I have a lot of things that do this in my collection. It's perfectly nice. I do like it as blush, but because of the pan size, I can't really fit. Like, a, like for me, let's see. Like this is a brush that I might use for blush. And I feel like I would have to be very careful to not touch this side if I was going to use this side. So I don't know. I like it enough to keep it, but I don't like it enough to recommend it. I think there's a lot of other things in my collection in this video and in future videos that I could recommend over that little duo. We already did these few highlighters. So my Melt collection. Melt highlighters are not my favorite formula, but they're still nice. I think this works for a lot of people. I don't think this would be quite Teresa approved. Let's say it rides rides the line of being Lacey Spookos and Fatheads approved. But some of the colors I find very unique, which is why I keep them. And there are circumstances in my life where I like a subtle highlighter. So <laughs> it's not quite subtle though. I would say I have like this, the Urban Decay Sin and then like my Cindy Luminizer, my Mary Luminizer, which we'll get to. They're like truly subtle to me. This, I should say Melt is more in between. It's not blinding. It's not quite that subtle. It kind of is very middle ground. So that might appeal to you. I don't know. But this one up front, Morning Star, this is my absolute favorite of the bunch. This looks white in the pan but it has a peach shift. It's such a unique shade. It's very similar to the Makeup Geek one that I liked, but more blinding than the Makeup Geek one. This one, I feel like I can get blinding. I could work, I could work up the product a lot to get kind of this effect on the cheeks. And I don't feel like I see this color often. Like I said, I tend to see more pinkies, pinky violets. Oh, I love this so much. I could look at this all day. Stargazer is my like normie colored highlighter. <laughs> it's the skin tone colored one. It's the one where if I'm not quite going for blinding, it's a shame because they swatch blinding, but they just don't have that same effect on the cheeks. But it's very skin tone for me, very work appropriate. I do like the compacts, the melt compacts. I don't know if that's a factor for you. I just like how they feel. They have good heft to them. They feel high end. They're very sleek. I like the all black. A good solid highlighter, but not my favorite for sure. Sorry, I'm very particular on how they all stand and I want all their little tops to be up. This is Genesis. This I keep as a blush, but it's so stunning. On a deeper skin tone, this would be a fantastic highlighter. For me, it's a blush and it is a peach with a gold flip that I love as a blush. Oh my God. Like, can you stand it? It's so pretty. This everywhere on the temples, all on the cheeks, draped on your nose. Forget it. Love it. <laughs> Illumination. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Don't come for me. I tried my best. I'm sorry. This is the one that came out with Melt's holiday collection. It's the one that, um, it's the one that has the skull on it. It's the Day of the Dead skull. It looks gorgeous in the pan but it just doesn't read this on the cheeks and I said that when I reviewed the Melt Holiday collection I don't like don't want to mess with it because <laughs> it's such a pretty embossing it's it's a peachy pink glittery flip so super unique reminds me of the Smashbox one of the Smashbox Vlada highlighters which is in a different drawer so a different video I love it so much, but it just doesn't perform well with the brush. You have to use your finger and that drives me crazy. But over a blush heavy look again, I know I keep saying that, but I'm really into blush right now. Oh, it's such a shame. It's such a shame that it doesn't read like Morningstar because I would use it all the time if it did. My old school Ofra highlighters. Now Ofra highlighters are in this packaging, 
but I have a bunch in the old packaging. And I will say, if you see some things that are no longer available that you know how old they are, don't come for me. Because every time I declutter my makeup, this is just a tangent, every time I declutter my makeup, there are three tests that my makeup has to pass in order for me to keep it. Does it smell okay and or look okay? So if it hasn't gone rancid, does it perform the same way it always has? And does it still bring me joy? If it passes those three tests, then I keep it. If it fails one of them, it's got to go. So these all bring me joy. These all perform the same. They haven't gone bad, but they are quite old at this point. My number one, I actually think I got Pillow Talk like right before they switched the packaging. But Pillow Talk is my favorite. I've done some damage to it. I've dropped it. I've used the shit out of it. So I'm starting to lose the like design in the middle. This is a blinding pink. The Ofra highlighters are unmatched in my opinion. Like if you want blinding, stop. They're so powdery. You wouldn't think that this would translate as glossy as it looks on the cheeks because it's not like a baked formula. It's just, it's just powdery. It feels like it's going to just dust away. But then it does this on the cheeks. And the way it swatches, it, how it performs on the cheeks, it's nuts. Right behind Pillow Talk, I have Rodeo Drive. I don't even have to look at the back. I know this is Rodeo Drive. This is such a classic to me. This is so good. I like to mix Pillow Talk and Rodeo Drive together because I think that creates a very flattering color for my skin tone. But they're just perfect. They're the perfect highlighters. This one is slightly newer. Again, I feel like I got this right before they switched their packaging. This is Bali. This one is more of a blush topper. It rides that line of highlighter slash blush topper to me because it's a little bit too deep for me. It's a peach gold flip. I, I didn't realize I had this many peach gold flips, but it's a very unique shade. And then I have a classic. This is the Nikki Tutorials Ofra collab, the original that came with the lippies in that bundle. I don't have the lippies anymore, but I keep this. This is, what did, what did she call it? Everglow. And then I know this one's glazed highlighters. She sells them as singles now. I forget what the other two are. I actually don't think she, they sell this shade anymore because it was like a strange color. And now they have just like a deeper bronzy shade. You mix all of them together. You have them apart. Should I swatch all of them? Fuck it. They're classics. Nikki Tutorials, man, she knows glow because I actually feel like I can't even use glaze highlighter because it's too white and it reads very white on the skin. I always mix it with the more goldy shade as I swatch glaze highlighter some more. This one, I because this one is just a hair too deep. So if I mix them together, they create a perfect shade. And then this one, the deep shade is a gorgeous eyeshadow, but I haven't reached for it as an eyeshadow in years. I always stick with these two, but they're really, I can't emphasize enough how good Ofra highlighters are. I will die on that hill. I, I'm not, again, not sponsored. Nothing in this video is sponsored. I've bought everything with my own money, but I would die on the Ofra highlighter hill. It's such a good fucking formula. These two are some classics. This is my Mary Luminizer. Look at the packaging. How could you not love this? And my Cindy Luminizer. <laughs> this one, I remember, again, it's kind of like the Urban Decay one where I remember the day I bought this. I remember like where I was, the, that Matt was with me. I remember researching this, being like, oh my God, every beauty guru talks about this. I have to have it. Uh, it's a classic, but it's not one that I've really reached for a lot. There is a little bit of a divot in the middle of it. But again, this is my like job interview formula. This is my someone's wedding <laughs> formula. <laughs> Cause it's really pretty and I think it was I paved the way for pretty much every highlighter to come after it, but it doesn't quite meet the standards I think that a lot of us have for highlighters now. And then Cindy Luminizer, another great shade, another kind of pinky pink shade that I use more as a blush or a blush topper. Pretty, but subtle. Not quite what I tend to reach for most days, but still has a purpose in my collection. Still has a reason why I would reach for it. And the balm, I know a lot of people give up on the bomb because they don't do a lot of like trendy things anymore. But I love this packaging. I love their whole aesthetic. I keep a lot of bomb products, I think, because I love the look of them. And I get very nostalgic for them because 
Matt and I met when we worked at Kohl's. They sell the bomb at Kohl's. It just kind of brings me back to being 18, 19, maybe 20. Just all of the fun stuff. I don't know. Is that cheesy? I don't care. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, my KVD vegan crush gold school extreme highlighter that came out. I think it was her anniversary collection. I forget what anniversary we were celebrating. Maybe 10. I don't remember. 5, 10. Who the, hell, who the hell knows? This was like the last collection that I bought from KVD before everything went down, before I canceled the brand. And I've just recently purchased some, purchased some blushes from them now that Kat is no longer out of the picture or is out of the picture. And they are now Kendo Vegan Vegan Doing Good Vegan Discovery Vegan Vegan Beauty Vegan. So... <laughs> This is one of my last products that I bought when they were still Kat Von D Beauty. This is trash. <laughs> Again, there's a time and a place where I would reach for this. And I use it a lot as an inner corner highlight. I don't know if you can see all these places where like a brush has dipped into it. It kind of has like creases in it for me using it as eyeshadow or blush. Because this is straight up glitter. This is straight up yellow glitter. And the first time I wore this, never forget it. Matt and I were going to a Newfound Glory concert, as we do, because we go to like five Newfound Glory concerts a year. And I remember using this and being so excited to use this, and it just everywhere. Glitter all over my face. And I remember thinking like, oh, thank God I'm going to a concert because no one's going to look twice at it. But ever since then, you either have to have your face super wet with setting spray before you use it, or you have to use a finger or wet your brush or something, because it's just going to glitter shit all over your face but I like it as an eyeshadow topper as a highlighter topper just pressed on top of another highlighter and just I don't know it kind of again it's a little nostalgic in a weird way but I don't hate it enough to get rid of it and then back here oh god <laughs> these are my like newer packaged for highlighters in this like really box boxy ridiculous packaging that I don't know if I like. I definitely like it better than the old school. This is trash. Can you imagine paying $30 for something packaged this poorly? Absolutely not. Like I get why they changed it, but this is so bulky. It does have good weight to it and it's like a sleek design, but it's just so thick and chonky. This is like chonky packaging. I know that you can take the pans out though, which is nice. I don't know. It's just chunky. I'm going to I'm trying to mind the mirror. Sorry. This is a shade star Island. This is probably, mm, I don't know. It gives pillow talk a run for its money. This is a really good shade. This is more like an ivory pale skin tone kind of color. I imagine this would be very frosty if you were like even slightly tanner than I am. I know, also, I know with um Samantha March's new collab, she did this and Pillow Talk together. I know why she would pair those together because they're both beautiful, pale friendly shades and they mix really well together. They're so super pretty because this has like a tinge of yellow to it, but not a lot. I really like this one a lot. This, ugh, I can't, I need to dig this one out more often. I think because it's chunky and I keep it kind of in the back, I don't reach for it as much, but it's so fucking good. And then underneath it, I have Nikki's other collabs with Ofra. This one is Cloud Nine. This is the pink one. I've gone into this one. This one's also kind of missing chunks where I would use it as an inner corner highlighter. This one, oh, it's very, there's just so smooth. And it has that pink reflect that I kind of reference as being very trendy for a while. And then this one, the other one, Space Baby. This is the blue one. I feel like it's not quite as blinding. I feel like in general, these two Nikki Tutorials ones aren't as blinding as other Ofra highlighters. I can't confirm or deny that, but I'm pretty sure it was Amy Loves Makeup who said that she reached out to Ofra and they confirmed it was a different formula than normal. Don't know what that's about. I just don't feel like there is blinding as the regular highlighters. Is that just me though? I don't know. I guess while I'm back here, I might as well start here and work my way up to the Becca's. I have some older drugstore highlighters back here. First, I have this Makeup Revolution strobe highlighter. I don't think they even sell this packaging anymore. I think they've redone all of their highlighters. This one I love for a drugstore highlighter, for a drugstore duochrome highlighter. It's a baked formula and it's a green shift. It's like a yellowy green shift. It reads very alien and that's why I keep it and that's why I love it because I don't 
You've seen no other highlighters that dupe this, really. I have maybe some in palettes that kind of come close. But I don't know if anyone remembers. And if you do remember this, you've been with me for a while. It wasn't last Christmas. It might have been the Christmas before. I had this, like, vision of a Christmas ornament-esque reflecting green highlighter. And I was on a quest to get something that, like, satisfied that need, that hole in my collection, dare I say. And I, this was the one that kind of satisfied that for me. It is such a pretty green chef. The reason I say Christmas ornament was because around the time I had white ornaments on my tree that reflected green like this. But anyway, so pretty. And then I have another old baked Makeup Revolution highlighter, the Vivid Baked Highlighters in Golden Lights. I'm pretty sure they've repackaged these by now. In fact, I have a newer Makeup Revolution baked highlighter. They look like this now. I'll get to that in a second. I get why they might have changed it because I don't know about you, but this packaging seems kind of suggestive to me. If I, so I'm going to get demonetized. But anyway, this is very gritty feeling, but it comes off very blinding. Again, just a really bright yellow shift. I actually, this is not as great of a halo kind of yellow silver shift, but it's really good. Halo from Give Me Glow. I've referenced that already like twice, I think. And then one more kind of drugstore classic. This is essence pure nude this i remember kathleen lights really i think was the one who put this on the map was the one who was like you gotta try this it's really such a blinding subtle from within i do think when you swatch it you don't quite get the, the kind of what it does across in a swatch because it really looks like the most natural you drink a lot of water and got a lot of sleep and are keeping up with your skincare type of highlighter it looks so good on the skin and it's, if I'm going for a subtle, that's the kind of subtle that I want is one that makes me look healthy versus one that makes me look like I have powder on the skin. <sighs> and then up, finally finishing up this drawer, I have my Becca highlighters. I collect the Becca highlighters and I don't know why. I just adore them. They're not alien slutty like any of these other highlighters. They're very much like the Essence Highlighter where it's a glow from within, but it's exactly what I just said. It's a well-rested, your body is doing this glow kind of glow from within. And there's a time and a place when I reach for them, but I just think they're so good. And they just are so luxurious to me in this kind of ridiculous packaging that I'm so super into. This is Champagne <laughs> Oh man, I do own Champagne Pop. This is one of the more blinding Becca highlighters. It's not the most intense, but for a Becca highlighter, this is pretty metallic. This is, of course, the Jaclyn Hill shade. I think I got it after Jaclyn Hill promoted it, though. Like, when they took it away from her and just made it a, a permanent shade. I think that's when I kind of crossed the line into wanting it. <laughs> I wasn't even an anti-Jaclyn Hill person at that time. It just worked out that way. Just super pretty. I do think this is one of those rare universal kind of gold shades like the Amorese highlighter, which you haven't seen it here. If there's any highlighter in general that you're like, bitch, I know you own that. Where is it? It's probably in my other drawer. We'll get to that in a different video. But this, I don't know. It's just a, it's a good shade. <laughs> to give Jacqueline Hill credit where credit is due, that is a good shade. And then right in front of it is the shade Rose Quartz. This is their lighter pink highlighter i know they also have a deeper pink that's the other good thing about the becca highlighters there's a shade for everybody like truly this one very fair friendly look at that oh again maybe not as blinding as champagne pop but still really good this is moonstone i bet this is moonstone yeah this is moonstone i've gone it on moonstone because this is like the fair friendly Becca highlighter. Again, not maybe as blinding as Champagne Pop, but still really nice, which means that this one is Pearl. Pearl is the white one. This was one of the first, like, super fair friendly. I keep saying, I've said that phrase so much in this video, and I apologize for how obnoxious that might be, but there, I remember when highlighters first started becoming a thing, they were very much just for like medium skin tones. I feel like there wasn't a good range for light skin tones and for deep skin tones. I think in general with makeup, we've come a long way. But like at the time that this, that I got this, it was very much like medium golds was the trend. So this was like rare for me. This is so pretty. This is Pearl. 
frosty white. Has kind of a glazed donut effect. I really like it. And then we get into like my fun limited edition shades. Creamsicle, right? This is what it's called. Dreamsicle, excuse me, is the orange one. I remember this was kind of like a big deal when it came out because people were like, oh my god, an orange highlighter. It's almost kind of like, it has like a bronziness to it, almost a little bit. Definitely meant for deeper skin tones. But I love this layered over blush. It really kicks blush up a notch, in my opinion, and makes like peachy blushes or nudie kind of blushes really just nice and warm and not even like metallic but just glowy i love it with a blush heavy look let's see this one is royal glow okay so this next couple ones they're part of their like passport collection that they did and i had to have all of them because i'm trash this one this one is royal glow right i just said that this one again a touch too deep for me layered over layered over blush though they're so similar it's slightly less orange, slightly more peachy. Layered over blush though, can't beat it. Spanish Rose Glow. This one I think is my favorite of the Passport Collection. First of all, the print, the dancer, stop it. This is kind of like the Melt Illumination Highlighter, but in a better formula in that it's a really strong pink, like even deeper pink flip. It's so unique and so pretty. Again, mostly a blush topper for me, but I do use blush toppers. I like very illuminated cheeks. So Parisian lights. Okay, maybe I lied. Maybe this one's my favorite because I've actually done a lot of damage to the embossing on this one. I kind of lost the top of the Eiffel Tower. This, again, I know I have a lot of highlighters in this shade, but it's a pink gold flip and I love pink gold flips. They're so flattering on my skin tone. It's such a pretty shade. Oh, Vanilla Quartz. This is one of my favorite Becca highlighters. This and the one that comes next. This is again similar to Stargazer from Melt. It's like a white gold almost peachy flip. So stunning on the more blinding side. You can really build this up to be really special. And I think this one, I think when they did this one, I think it was like a vote for which shade you want us to release, but then they ended up releasing both anyway. Oh, I skipped one before I get into the competition one. Berlin Girl Glow. This one is very interesting. It's almost like a silvery blue kind of tint to it. It's very unique. This one I know a lot of people go crazy for. I think the Beauty News girls really love this one. Not my favorite, but I see why people love this one. But anyway, going back. So the Vanilla Quartz one, and then... I'm getting myself all mixed up. So the Vanilla Quartz one, and then it was this one that was like a poll where you voted which one that you wanted to come out with, but they came out with both anyway. This one is Golden Mint. And I don't know why they call it that, because while in the pan it kind of looks like it has a green tint to it, it definitely doesn't read green at all. <laughs> in person, it reads much more white toned, more white than the Vanilla Quartz one, like more white of a base. And it just has like a more subtle kind of pinky gold glow to it, but I love it. Oh my god, those two, probably my favorite bag of highlighters, period, Vanilla Quartz and um, what's, what's the mint one called? Vanilla Quartz and Golden Mint. Two of my, just, they're, oh, I love them so much. I wish they would do more highlighters like that. Opal. I do own Opal, but I own, like, a limited edition breast cancer awareness Opal, where part of the proceeds went to charity for breast cancer research. I think I referenced Opal earlier is that it's definitely too deep for me, but it's such a beautiful shade, and it's one that I love to warm up other blushes with or um add glow to blushes with it's such a pretty shade i get why it's a classic and i think if you're just slightly deeper than me i'm fair i'm definitely fair i think if you're within light to maybe light medium to deep it's definitely gonna look beautiful on you as a highlighter for me it's a blush topper such a pretty shade though i get why it's a classic prismatic amethyst one of their only duochrome highlighters so pretty more of like a violet than like a strong pink like the Nikki tutorials one not the most blinding of a shift but really pretty oh my god 
god, this one I love too. <laughs> I love all my highlighters. Lilac, Geode, shut the hell up. I love this one so much. Another pink gold. Stop. I am such a sucker for a pink gold flip. Get get out of town. Because <laughs> I mix pink and gold highlighters anyway. So I love when they're mixed together for me. And then Year of the Pig. Oh my god, I lost my fucking mind when the Year of the Pig highlighter came out. I don't know why they didn't bring the shade back. Like, I know they did, um, what's, <laughs> I forget what year we're currently in. I'm so sorry. The year... The Lunar New Year highlighter that they released this year was just like a re-skinned, a re-skinned as Matt would say, a re-skinned highlighter of Moonstone. I don't know why they wouldn't bring back this shade because this shade is so fucking good. It's a super pale kind of champagne-y ivory shade. Really natural. Oh my, shut the fuck up. I love it so much more than, new, than Moonstone because it's like more neutral than Moonstone. Moonstone reads more yellow. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so frosty. I love it. Not even frosty. Maybe frosty is not the best word. It's just neutral. Like it's not too pink. It's not too yellow. It's so good. And then my last Becca highlighter. This one I don't reach for a lot, but it has its place. Gold Lava. It's a true, true yellow gold. Not quite as yellow as like Trophy Wife, but still very yellow. This is one... Kind of similar to Gilded Honey. A blush heavy, or not even a, a bronzer heavy look. A summery look. One where I want noticeably gold cheeks. I don't really want it to look natural. Really like this one though. Has some sparkle to it too. Maybe more sparkle than other highlighters. And then just because I have some highlighters up top. These are like highlighters that are newer to my collection. You would have saw them in my birthday haul live that I did. We're ignoring this back here. This is for another video. This though, these are like my most recent drugstore additions to my collection. This, this one and this one. These are from Makeup Obsession, which I believe is an offshoot of Makeup Revolution. These I found at Target. I got these because Teresa, Teresa's Dead Teresa, recommended this one, Mega Lightning. She, she said this was like a rare, fine, super blinding highlighter. I saw this one and I also picked up Mega Honey because it just looked like a pretty shade. Teresa was right. This shade slaps. This is such a good white highlighter from the drugstore and because it's baked, it's super blinding. And then Mega Honey is, I think honey would be the best way to describe this shade because it's definitely yellow, but it's not too strong of a yellow. Really really pretty. And then I kind of got all these baked highlighters around the same time. This is the Milani baked highlighter in Dulce Perla. It's more pink. It has this bulky ass packaging. Who needs that? But super pretty pink. More pink than the white lightning shade. And they're so blinding. They read so blinding on the skin. Another baked highlighter. This is the new packaging that Makeup Revolution does for their baked highlighters. This is just my type. I saw Taylor Wynn talk about this and Shen Shortcake. They're off, they do a lot of pale friendly videos and that's like a focus of a lot of their videos and a lot of the products that they recommend because they're also very fair. They're arguably two people who got me into beauty YouTube and probably are two people who are the reason I have a channel now. But anyway, I saw both of them talking about this. This is really peachy. I don't see peachy kind of highlighters like this often. It's a really pretty shade. Reminds me a lot of one of the Laura Geller highlighters. I love this one a lot too. I think the drugstore has really been stepping its game up lately. I apologize if I've been redundant this whole video and said that I love everything a thousand times, but I do. I've curated my collection so heavily and I do love genuinely every piece of makeup that I own, but anyway. And then finally, to close out this part of my collection video and there will be others to come, this... Holy shit. This I cannot put down. I reach for this almost every day. It's so good. These are the Pixie by Petra highlighters. And they're the glowy powders, I believe they're called. This one is creamy gold. I think they're repackaged previous highlighters. I'm 99% sure that these were the shades from the Aspirin Ovard collection. If I'm saying her name right, I'm so sorry. That... 
they collab with, with her and they release highlighters like this. I'm pretty sure they just repackaged them and have, are selling them without her now. But this creamy gold shade, it's so thick and heavy. It's very, it's a little silicone-y. I don't know if you can see on camera, probably not. When I look closely at it, it's very micaceous. You can see the flakes of mica and like all kind of embedded in it the way it just, it brings, this is so ridiculous, but it brings me to like geology lab and it makes me think of like looking at rocks in geology lab and looking for mica because I can see the mica so clearly personally. But anyway, this is a very creamy formula. And it's so blinding. I saw reviews on Ulta.com that said that these were not glowy highlighters. These weren't blinding. I don't know what the hell they were doing to apply them. Because this is so very much a blinding highlighter. And I cannot stop reaching for it. It's such a good shade for my skin tone. It looks very wet on my skin tone. And very glossy. Very editorial. I cannot put this highlighter down. And then I also got the shade Peachy Glow. Because, you know what I'm going to say... I like it as a blush and or a blush topper because I do like glowy butt blush, glowy butts, glowy blush, especially lately. I'm living that blush life. It's just super pretty. I know I have a thousand shades that look just like this. Don't come for me. You know what you're signing up for. They're, I, they're so good. I can't put them down. I definitely get why people don't like them because I think people don't like this kind of heavier, thick powder formula for a highlighter. But I'm all for it. I'm all for whatever gets the job done for a super blinding glow. But the package is a little obnoxious. I don't know. It just, it's like, it, it's a little inconvenient. But you know what? Whatever. I don't mind it. And with that, that was one of my drawers of highlighter. My other drawer of highlighter doesn't quite have this many highlighters in it. It tends to be where I keep my bulkier highlighters, my heavier, like, chunky highlighters that are in more ridiculous packaging. So that'll be coming up. I don't know when. I don't know how fast I'm going to push out collection videos. This was kind of an experiment to see how I like this format, how it works editing-wise, how you guys receive it. But anyway... Just know that this is highlighter drawer one. I have a second drawer of highlighters and I also have face palettes that exist in a separate basket. So depending on how fast I get through my second highlighter drawer, I might do that one in the basket together. I don't know, but anyway. Let me know what you guys think of my collection video. Let me know what you think of these highlighters, what your favorite highlighters are. If you think I'm a monster, that's fine. Matt just got home anyway, so it's perfect timing for me to stop. If you like this video, if you like collection videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spookless and Fat Hips. My Twitter, at Spooky Lacey. I can't get my other finger out. <laughs> Did you see how ridiculous that was? The Half Cousins Podcast. All of that information will be linked down below. Like I said, talk to me about your makeup collection down below. Talk to me about highlighters down below. But other than that, that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys!